Hey everyone, this is gonna be episode 12 of my Injustice 2 character talks, and this one is going to be on Scarecrow and Honor of Tomorrow because there's a Watchtower tomorrow, and they're showing Scarecrow, Gorilla Grodd, and Firestorm. And my Firestorm episode is already up along with Captain Cold. So I will be doing episode 12 and 13 tonight, and then I will be planning the rest. Because I'm gonna add some, like I'm gonna do some on atrocities and Green Arrow that stuff and the DLC characters I chose, so there will be a lot more. But let's get started. So first we're reading on the encyclopedia, and then we're gonna go on the Batman wiki because I have it pulled up on my laptop. Um, I'm gonna read from there. So we're going to read Scarecrow's page, and Scarecrow first appeared in World's Finest Comics number 3 in fall of 1941. Um, in the four 1940s he only had two appearances, apparently, but I'll get onto that when um, I read from the Wikipedia. So his real name is Jonathan Crane, he's a villain, occupation was professor and professional criminal. Well, is professor and professional criminal. His base is Gotham City. His powers and abilities include um, biochemistry and psychology. Because he's a psychologist and biochemist, he uses knowledge to create a fear inducing gas that creates nightmarish hallucinations in the mind of anyone who inhales it. His costume also is designed to strike terror, a mechanic, and he's a manic hand to hand combatant. So he's skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Um, this little section says, Terror Master, a psychiatrist turned psychopath, the scarecrow, uses his fear gas to terrorize his victims, often leaving their minds permanently crippled. Um, So let's read the summary. Uh, gawky and uncoordinated as a child, Jonathan Crane is often the physical and emotional target of neighborhood bullies. Initially frightened by their horrible taunts, Crane eventually decided he would turn the tables on his attackers and begin voraciously studying phobias and the nature of fear. So, um, he's very smart when it comes to people's phobias and studying fear and stuff, so um, there's that. As an adult, Crane became an expert psychologist specializing in fear. He also acquired some knowledge of chemistry, studying how certain combinations of chemicals could affect the human psyche. Crane became a professor at Gotham City University, but was summarily dismissed from his unorthodox teaching methods and his refusal to follow the school's safety codes. So he did not follow safety rules. Um, Crane's fragile mind snapped after his dismissal and he adopted the guise of the Scarecrow, vowing to use his knowledge of fear in his own specially designed fear gas to gain revenge. Using this chemical, the Scarecrow killed several of Gotham University's regents by literally scaring them to death. Um, the Scarecrow was then confronted by the Batman who ended the villain's reign of terror and incarcerated him in Arkham Asylum. For the criminal insane. Escaping from custody over and over again, the scarecrow used stolen funds to constantly upgrade the potency of the fear, ga fear gas, uh, mixing powerful synthetic adrenocortical secretions with potent hallucinogens to create a pathogen strong enough to prompt almost instantaneous tear terror induced heart attacks of his victims and haunts their fellow Batman and his allies. A spooky threat to a citizen of Gotham City, the Scarecrow is obsessed with fear in all its manifestations and relishes in, in inflicting. Perhaps, fortunately, Crane is prey to phobia of his own. Chiroterophobia, a chronic fear of bats, or more specifically, of Batman. So he's actually scared of Batman. Um. And this 
little summaries about Hush. Um, Scarecrow was one of the several Arkham inmates the villain Hush used in his war against Batman. Scarecrow has used his fear toxins and psycho psychological expertise to frighten and manipulate Joker, Poison Ivy, Killer Croc, and the Huntress into battling Dark Knight. Um, so, that's all. This encyclopedia says. So, very interesting. Um, let's see what the wiki says. Because we're gonna go and discuss his creators, like who created him. Um, and he is created by the same people that created, uh, Poison, not Poison Ivy, but Catwoman. Alright, so Dr. Jonathan Crane, also known as the Scarecrow, is a DC Comics supervillain and an enemy of Batman, created by Batman creators Bill Finger and Bob Kane. He first appeared in World's Finest Comics number 3, fall of 1941. His Scarecrow costume, lanky appearance, and surname was inspired by Ichabod Crane of the horror fable The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. <laughs> Makes sense. Um, he is an overly obsessive and deranged ex-professor of psychology who uses a variety of drugs and psychological tactics to use the fear and phobias to, of his adversaries. He does not commit his crimes for wealth but rather as a form of research to further study the effects of, here, of fear on humans, and later he does to satisfy his own psychopathic desires, making the innocent citizens of Gotham his unwilling guinea pigs. Okay, and here's where it says, the Scarecrow only made two appearances in the 1940s, the Batman writers of the 1960s revived him, and he has since consistently appeared in Batman comic books. He was featured in several, several times in the Emmy-winning 1990s cartoon Batman the Animated Series, where he for, was first played by Henry Pollock II. And when the series was revamped and shown together with Superman the Animated Series, the character was voiced by Jeffrey Combs in the 2005 film Batman Begins, and its sequel is The Dark Knight and The Dark Knight Rises. He was portrayed by Cillian Murphy. Um, and to be honest, that guy... <laughs> That guy was actually, in a way, a perfect scarecrow because I always find him really creepy in the movies that he's in. Um, he's a really good actor, though. Um, so, we're going to talk about his. We're going to go through his team affiliations, his abilities, and who he's been portrayed by, then we're going to go on to some other stuff. Um, this might be a longer episode because there's some. There's quite a lot about him. On this page, so moving on. Um, his team affiliations include the Injustice League, Assorted Batman Rogues, Injustice Gang, Secret Society of Supervillains, and the Sinestro Corps. Um, he is well educated on the psychology of fear. He develops various tools which induce crippling fear. He may transform under duress into the monstrous scare beast, gaining superhuman strength, endurance, and a more potent hallucinogen. He has been portrayed by Cillian Murphy, Henry Pollock II, who did his voice, Je Jeffrey Combs, who also did his voice, Dino Andrade, who did his voice, Charlie Tahan, John Noble, Jason Mantzoukas, I don't know how to say that, um, but those are all the people that have portrayed the Scarecrow. Um, So, in the Golden Age, elements of the Scarecrow fear gas appeared in Batman publications prior to his first appearance. For instance, the idea of fear gas first appeared in Detective Comics number 46 in December 1940 in a story featuring Hugo Strange, in which he uses a special fear dust in order to scare the police and successfully rob a bank. In his first appearance in, War in the world's finest comics number three during the golden age of comic books, the Scarecrow is first introduced as Jonathan Crane, a professor of psychology 
He turns to crime after he is fired. An expert in the psychology of fear, he had fired a gun in a classroom full of students to illustrate a point. The only thing revealed about his early life is that as a child he had liked to frighten birds ostracized by his fellow professors for his appearance and reclusiveness. He turned to crown to make himself part of the social elite. His modest operandi is to use his scarecrow persona and threaten his victims into doing whatever he wants. In terms of his costume, he merely wore a black, a ragged black hat, trench coat, mask, and wielded a Tommy gun. Okay. Um, we're not gonna read the last part. No, we're not gonna go super, super into depth. That's because it's very long. Um, so, alright, so we're going to read in the Silver Age part, and then maybe the post-crisis modern age version. Um, so in the Silver Age, throughout the 1960s Silver Age of comic books, the Scarecrow was revived to be one of Batman's most recurring rivals. He is a frequent member of the Injustice Gang. Ironically, in his Earth-1 incarnation, Crane has a strange fear of birds, even though he has a pet magpie named Craw. He also owned a pet crow he named Nightmare. Okay. Um. Okay. So in the post-crisis modern age version, following the 1986 multi-title event Crisis on Infinite Earths reboot, Crane's origin story was greatly expanded in the graph in 1989 graphic novel Batman Scarecrow number one part of the Batman year one continuity in the novel he becomes obsessed with fear and revenge from being bullied throughout his childhood and adolescence for his lengthy frame and bookish nature he commits his first murder at the age of 18 by brandishing a gun in his high school parking lot during the senior prom dressed in the ghoulish scarecrow costume that would later become his trademark he causes the head bully Bo Griggs and his girlfriend Sherry Squires who had rejected Crane to have an automobile accident which paralyzes Griggs and kills Squires. From this Crane discovers a savage delight in literally frightening people to death. So that is when he started doing it. Um because he enjoyed it, basically. So that's interesting. Also, I want to speak about the um, Injustice storyline. If it's on here anywhere, if not, I'll read. I'll search it. Um, and again, his powers and abilities include fear gas, close combat, psychology, um, the scare beast, which is. Uh, some genetic manipulation done to him secretly by Dr. Linda Futawa, also known as the Criminal Fright. He gains the ability to turn into a large monster with greatly enhanced strength, endurance, um, and a few gas he naturally emits. However, he has to be under physical strain or duress to transform. And he has a guardian power ring during the Blackest Night event. The scarecrow is temporary. He deputized into the Sinestro Corpse by a duplicate of Sinestro's powering. He proves to be a very capable to be very capable at manipulating the light of fear to create constructs until his ring is stolen by Lex Luthor. Okay. And these are just different versions of him. Um Alright, so it looks like we're gonna have to search real quick on uh, his part in Justice. As I know, he appeared in some of the comics, and it is said that he um committed suicide, but that he was revived. Um. He's a cameo character in Injustice Gods Among Us. We know that he's in a transition stage. Um. Okay. So.
Again, it goes over his biography. Scarecrow is a brilliant psychologist turned supervillain who fights Batman and Gotham City, specializing in techniques and chemicals that manipulate fear. Jonathan Crane was originally a well respected professor, although he lost credibility when he obsessively took his experiments too far and they sent him into madness, became obsessed with spreading and experiencing fear as a scarecrow. So, in the Injustice comic, Scarecrow's body is found in Star Labs by the Flash, his face twisted into a smile, a telltale sign of poisoning by the Joker. The Joker is laughing toxin, excuse me. Um, Joker would use Scarecrow's pure toxin laced with kryptonite to make Superman see his wife Lois as doomsday, causing the Man of Steel to accidentally murder her and seal Metropolis's fate. Okay, so... In the original Injustice comics, he did not commit suicide. But, um, uh, it is said that his storyline in Injustice 2, and this is due to a leak, um, I'm not sure if it's true, but um, his storyline is supposed to be that he um, originally committed suicide, but he was working on fear toxin gas, and he inha he got too much of it into his body, and it basically brought him back to life because there was too much in his system, and that's why he turned into how he looks like in Injustice 2, and that's why he has the noose around his neck. So that might very well prove to be true for his little backstory, but, um, again, I don't know because I don't exactly read the Injustice comics, but, uh, that's what I've heard, so, his part in Injustice 2, he's part of the society, um, that is confirmed through the web website and the, excuse me, uh, movie trailers, not movie trailers, uh, story mode trailers, sorry, um, and I really like Scarecrow, he's, uh, a great Batman villain, uh, I wish they used him more, but they don't, um, but all in all, he's a really good character, um, so I do like him in general, and I will be playing him in Injustice too. so, with that being said, that was my episode on Scarecrow. And for episode 13, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you the last one in my main um, episodes is going to be Catwoman. And then I will be planning more like bonus episodes, I guess you can call them. So like I'll be doing ones on Atrocitus, Green Arrow, Flash, um, Zatanna. Raven, Killer Frost, all of them. I'll be doing some on the characters I wanted to return, which are the ones I just named, and then the characters I'm excited about returning, which include Flash and um, Arrow. So I will be doing one on Brainiac as well and Lily Rod. So I have a lot more planned. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, and leave a like if you did, and comment below if you will be using Scarecrow and Justice too. So, thanks for watching.